What's up everybody? Thanks for tuning in. Um, this video originally I had a whole other plan for it. Um, it's some stuff I actually shot uh, a little while back and I've been sitting, I've just been so busy, haven't had time to do any editing. But um, so I figured now that I'm getting around to doing some of that editing, um, it kind of took a turn to a whole different thing. So I just wanted to kind of do a little intro here. Um, my original plan was, you know, I had a few minutes to stop by the creek one day and I was out and about and my whole plan was, because I did have um, a rod, and a micro rod in the car, my little ultralight setup that has pretty much my go-to bait, and I, that's what I'm about to explain right now, but um, I had that on there and then I had um, a bigger rod with my typical 50 pound braid and I had, I think, like a 5 aught hook on it. Um, I had been using for some soft plastics. And my goal was to catch a small enough bluegill right quick where I could throw it on the big hook and use it live to try to catch my first gar. I've still never caught a gar before, and there's a bunch in that creek. So that was my plan, was to, you know, hook up to a, a small bluegill and then use it to catch me a big gar. That did not happen. Um, I ended up catching several fish, but just um, nothing like what I was uh, intentionally, you know, going after that day. So since it kind of took a turn, um, I thought I would make this video pretty much just all about my go-to um, universal all-around species um, bait especially for ultralight. I mean, you pretty much can't get any better for ultralight. Um, you know, any kind of little creek, any little pond, any, you know, even retention pond, a little, any little spot that you can ever find, um, if, pretty much if there's any fish in there, you can catch them with this bait. Um, again, we literally have caught everything from all size of bluegill and different kinds of sunfish, all sides of crappie, all sides of bass, on up to we've caught pickerel, uh, bowfin, uh, catfish, literally everything on this bay. So, and there's just all different ways you can rig it up. So that's what we're going to get into right now. So the bait that we are referring to is has been around forever. It's called a beetle spit. So, but bear with me. It's, I, I do this differently than most people do with beetle spin. Your typical beetle spin, you're gonna get. It's gonna come. There's all different sizes. It's gonna be a rig like this with a little spinner blade on it. So. Typically, it's going to be a smaller one with a blade about like this. Blade about like that. And generally, it's going to come with a little teeny tiny grub on a jig head like this. Or, you know, depending on the size beetle spin you get, I mean, like there's a slightly bigger one. I don't have any of the big, big ones right now, but they have all sizes of these things. Now, with this particular, with these grubs and these jig heads, you absolutely can catch stuff with those. But I've had a lot better luck by pretty much discarding these. I take this rig right here. This is really, um, depending on how big a bait you're going to put on this, then you, know, you might need to balance it out with a bigger blade. But I really have had better luck with this standard size like this right here. Okay. And also, you know, you can get them in gold or silver. And gold, for whatever reason, seems to get more action. So I'm going to leave that right there. What I like to do is use these little, uh, I'm quite certain these are 16th ounce jig heads. Okay. And, you know, I don't even remember the brand that, that makes these. But as you can see, I'm holding it up to the GoPro over here. These particular hooks, um, I don't even know what they call them, honestly. 
but instead of it being just a regular curved hook like a regular jig head it comes up and then bends back down and you know it, it's a good lift lock I mean once you get hooked they pretty much do not come off of here very rarely so I open up these little beetle spin rigs it's got like a, a little uh, lock that you can push over and come off now I always make sure I have it oriented right you're going to want it coming off the back like that so I kind of follow it down around the bend so I know that I'm putting it on right and I just slide it right on there slide it down to the end now once in a while those jig heads will have paint in the hole so you just need to take like another hook and poke it out so ultimately this is the main rig you're going to have but the beauty of this is you can put all kinds of baits on this thing these are going to be some of my most common baits that I use Okay, probably my two most common are these they're made by Strike King Mr. Crappy they're called shad poles and you get like a whole pack for like I don't know a couple bucks or something and they have all different kinds of colors um, I've had the best luck with this particular color it's called uh, Smoky Shad and as you can see you know it's kinda got like a clear silverish body you know on the bottom but then the top has a lot more like blues and blacks and silver metallic in it so I have a lot of luck with that one I've also had a lot of luck with these that are black with red flake on top and then yellow belly I've had some luck with these they're just yellow top white belly so that covers a pretty decent range of colors there um, but so really my top producing baits on this rig though has been either that smoky shad shad pole or these I don't even have the topper for it but these are made by cream they're called frisky frogs I know you've seen these around you can get a whole pack of these things for like 99 cents I've seen other videos on YouTube where you know guys basically just hook on like Texas rig and stuff like that and and burn them across the top and have caught stuff that way where I mean literally it basically is like a mini you know rivet frog and so those little legs just if you burn it across the top they just, just paddle right across but what I always do same thing just like I do with some of these other baits I put it on the jig head so with these you now feed the hook down in there and then I, I bring the hook out right before right before the legs split and push it on up on the jig head and there you go so I know that kind of looks weird it's like this little frog but then like the jig head sticking out the front but this is a crappy slayer crappy crappy um, had a ton of luck with that very setup right there so uh, mainly yeah a lot of crappy a lot of bass some bigger bluegill several other baits that do work really well uh, also by Mr. Crappy Strike King they have these things called Crappy Thunder and they're kind of like these little grubs that have these little skirt kind of tails on them they have all different kinds of colors what I do a lot of times is I'll take about half of these and just pull them right off the reason I do that is you know especially 
you know, th this really is targeting more smaller fish. We definitely have caught some big fish on it, but you're targeting more of the smaller fish. So if you got that big old skirt, um, you know, I, I just think that's going to cut down on your hook set. It's a lot, now that I've pulled that off, it's a lot less for them to get their mouth around. So yeah, I've, I've definitely, especially crappy, I've caught a lot on those. Um, these from Charlie Brewer Jr. Uh, they're called sliders, crappy sliders. Um, had a lot, lot of luck, uh, same thing, I put them, every bit of these baits, I put on that 16th ounce jig head on the rig. So I've had a lot of luck with these, they got these in all colors. Power bait has these little uh, mini uh, minnow things, you know, same thing, all this stuff. Any, you know, especially if you can go to like a Cabela's or a Bass Pro or something, you know, they'll always have a section that's just like really targeted towards crappy fishing. And they'll have all different kinds of little baits like this. But even, you know, Walmart, they generally have a pretty decent crappy fishing section. So, that's why I wanted to break this rig down and show, I mean, it literally is one of my big time go-to baits that I keep on, especially keep on my micro rod like all the time pretty much. Uh, I will switch up and try like micro crankbaits and stuff like that on there, but I keep this on a lot. Um, very versatile, and again, we've caught all kinds of species. So, since this video, the, the footage you're about to see, um, is that's that that video took a turn and really ended up instead of me targeting small bluegill to use live, um, I just ended up catching like a bunch of crappy. Still some bluegill, but like bigger, and then ended up catching a pretty decent um, pickerel. It was actually my first pickerel this year since since like last winter. Um, also had a cool old man that showed up to the spot and was telling me some cool old stories, and he ended up hooking into some bowfin uh, while we were there. So yeah, just stay tuned, uh, check it out, and we'll catch it again. Bye. Stop, 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 stop. Stop, let me get your lip. 
Another little guy. Yeah, so if you didn't know, um, crappie are definitely more of a cold water fish. Um, around here in North Carolina, we can catch them all year, but just not nearly as much as we do in the colder months. Um, during the, when it's warmer water, they really do get a lot more lethargic, go to deeper water. Uh, oh, whoa, whoa. Oh, I got a pickerel. I got a pickerel. Oh, whoa. Yes. Man, first pickerel in a long time. Oh, whoa. Let me get my grippers. Hey, buddy. Gotcha. Ha <laughs> ha. Not what I was expecting. Let me wrench you. Oh, whoa. Stop. <laughs> I swear. Aggressive guys, man. Check him out. Stop. Very nice. Not what I was expecting at all. And off you go. Catch some catfish, you said? Both in. Okay. You ever eat both in? Yes, sir. I've heard it's really good. Well, you have to. You had to get the skin off of it. Mm hmm. I don't even scale them. Yeah, just cut it all the way off. Just cut all the skin off. You leave that skin on them, being fit and beat. Yeah. But if you, if you scale them, if you go back and cut all that skin, the meat's real soft. Yeah. But if you fry, I've actually good. heard that gar's really good too. If gar's you if you good. can get through that outer skin, you they know. Good. Yeah, I've heard that's it's kind of uh, well. Yes, the gar is like real real good white meat, but I've heard that uh, like pickerel and pike and stuff is actually more similar uh, similar to like lobster meat almost yeah. or crab meat. Now both and I come out here, I catch them way fifteen twenty. Yeah, um, I caught a, a nine pound one out here. Every day you get them to bite, and they are kind of. Yeah, I think they're they're kind of finicky. What uh, what do you normally use when you catch bowfin? Yeah, they're kind of hard. To... What kind of bait you normally use when you catch bowfin? Cut bait, brim, cut up brim. Or... Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what uh. Like I said, my, my whole goal was to come out here and uh, catch me a small enough bluegill that I could put it on my bigger hook on the braid and yeah. try to catch a gar because I've been seeing a bunch of them lately. This place full of gar, Jack. Yeah. I had one I caught the other day. He weighed 15 pounds. A gar or a bowfin? No, a bowfin blackfish. Right there. Get nice, yeah. Cool. Fish would shrimp a lot in here. Really? Yes, sir, right there. 
the little uh, yellow cat, the blue cat. Yeah, yellow bullheads yeah. and uh, I caught a black bullhead on the other side over here a while back. Um, I don't ever, you know, target stuff like that. Actually, I caught it on this same little beetle spin rig. Got him? Got him. Lord have mercy. That's what I like right here. Yeah, bud. That looks very nice. Get that off. Oh! <laughs> Damn it. That was a nice one right there. But you have caught gar out here, though? Yeah. What, on, uh, what kind of bait? Beetle spin and them little old uh, Uh huh. Uh huh. And they're hitting them real good in here. The old bridge used to be down there. Car run off. A man hit it. Hit the in the guardrail car and that where it killed the post of the wooden bridge went through the windshield and went slammed through him. Dang. I was a little boy when they tore tore that down. Wow. Look at that. <laughs> Yeah, Jack, man, they, they're getting active. They're liking this colder water. Yeah, I was a little boy when they tore that down. But uh, that car, it was a moonshine. The man was running moonshine. Mm -hmm. And his truck was packed full of money. Dang. There was money floating all over the creek. <laughs> they got that at the police knock on here and got boats and men. Yeah. He's got it, man. He's got it. He's got it. That was a bowfin and it came loose right there. That was a bowfin. Son of a That was a big one. <laughs> Daggone, son. That was a nice one. Yeah, yeah, he looked like probably about that long. Jeez. That sucks. It's worth it. Alright, thanks again for watching guys. Um, as you can see. That, that bait does work um, in that relatively short amount of time down at the creek. Um, you know, I, I caught, I think it was like six crappy, uh, decent bluegill, and that decent pickerel. And get, that was pretty short amount of time, but you can see that's three diff different species, and um, we've caught so many more on that in all kinds of crazy places. And um, I mean, you can pull it through like real slow, and especially since getting into the colder months of the year and especially dead of winter you literally can just slow roll this thing and you know pretty much just drag it across the bottom um the the nature of the design um it does tend to be relatively weedless i mean it, it pulls across stuff pretty well but you know if you are slow rolling it across the bottom sooner or later you're definitely going to get snagged that's just kind of the nature of, of fishing uh creeks and ponds but um yeah so being able to pull it that slow um because with that spinner on there it kind of keeps it afloat pretty decent so um it just allows you to be able to fish in a lot more tighter spots and little small you know puddles and ponds and tiny creeks and stuff that you normally never would be able to but again you can see it works and uh i definitely encourage you to to get you i mean this literally you know, you can get one of these rigs by itself for like a dollar, maybe a dollar some change. And then a uh, pack of those jig heads for maybe, you know, a couple bucks. And then like say a pack of these frisky frogs for like 99 cents. You know, you can do that. Especially, actually I think the rigs come from like two in a pack. So just a few bucks can catch you a whole lot of fish. So hope you enjoyed it. If you like more videos like this, um, just leave some comments down below and tell me. And uh, otherwise, please subscribe to the channel. Catch you on the next one.